welcome to the Sharpsville Garage channel. Hopefully you saw uh, the first video where I was giving a, a tour on the inside of the garage here and you saw the one wall that had the brick already installed and I told you my plans to install brick on all the interior walls and, and I was using thin brick. Well, here's uh, thin brick. It, it looks like regular brick on the face, but you can see it's a lot thinner. It's a half inch thick. And this works great in this application because there's, I don't need the depth of a full brick. Uh, I, I think those cost more. I'm not sure I never did um, price them, but you would definitely have to install them differently. I'm just mounting these to OSB and I just put adhesive on the back of the brick and stick it on the wall. Now, it's not quite that simple, uh, but it, it's a lot easier than doing uh, the regular brick. And I have a video to show you how uh, I install it. And I've already completed two walls that are about a total of maybe 45, 40 or 45 feet. So it's a bunch of brick and it's, it's working out fine. So what I wanted to show you though is the first thing before you put any brick up is you have to figure out how you're going to uh, do the courses and how you lay out the wall. So that's what I wanted to show you today. So, and that's why I got the camera back so you can see this whole wall. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the marks. But first off, I put this tape on the wall so that you can see the marks that I've made. You don't need to put tape. It's just to make it a little clearer for you to see. Um, on the walls I'm doing, I'm not using tape. I just use a magic marker. Some of the, on some of the OSB, it has some black ink on there, and so it's not easy to see pencil marks. So uh, maybe, you know, you use that or some other kind of a marker. But the first tool that you uh, need to use is one of these rules that, uh, you know, it's one of these kind that fold up. And on one side, it has the English system on it, inch, inches. And on the other side, it has these uh, lines on here and these numbers, three, four, five, six, eight, and so forth. This is called a modular spacing rule. And so first off, all the information that, I'm, that I've learned is what a brick mason uh, has told me and you know he graciously informed me because I was clueless how to do this and um, so I'm not a brick expert or masonry expert but I've already used this technique and these tools on a couple of walls and it works out great so um, I'm just passing it along so modular spacing rule the brick that I'm using is um, called standard brick and on here they have these descriptions the scale of six, so you use these uh, lines that have the six next to them, it's for standard brick and you'll get uh, six courses of brick in 16 inches. And the scale of eight is Roman brick, you'll get eight courses in 16 inches. The scale of five, you'll get five in 16 inches and so forth. And so um, on the scale of six, just as a reference, because I'm going to use it in the back uh, in a minute here, I'll show you when we got when I got done lining this out. If you measure from uh, six to six line, it's two and five eighths inches. Now that's not the height of the brick; that's the um, dimension that they're using for the height of one brick and one mortar joint. I can tell you the the brick that I'm using anyway, the height, the length. The thickness it varies to some degree but you know I think that's uh, I kind of like it because it adds some variety to the wall so anyway what you do uh, to get started is if you're going to mount the brick uh, you're going to go from the ceiling to the floor then you would put this uh, ruler up against the ceiling in my case and like I described on the first video I have this wire chase uh, that I'm put all around the building to you can see there's some electrical wires and conduit I mean uh, box um, junction boxes and so I'm going to install the brick from the bottom of the wire chase to the top of the baseboard and so what you do is is you just take this rule and and you put it against the bottom of the wire chase in my case and then you mark on the wall everywhere that there's a six if you were using Roman brick, then you'd mark it everywhere there's an eight. 
Um, so let me zoom the camera in so you can see what happens at the bottom and how you, uh, you know, how you take that into account. And I think this would happen on uh, any, any brick that you use. I mean, maybe in some rare lucky case, your wall or where you're mounting the installing the brick would would be in multiples of the height of your brick and you wouldn't have to do any modifications but so here's the the tape on on your right hand side this is just a continuation of what i was just showing you and then this tape was added because i'm modifying things so what happened was is I put this uh, modular spacing rule on here, marked all the lines, got down to the bottom, and there's this amount of space left. And you can see it's not enough for a, the height of a full brick, so you have to do something. So this, so this line down to here, it's one and three eighths inches. That's what's left over. And you have to take it up, take it up, take it into account somehow. The other thing that the mason told me is I described to him what I was doing, and he said he would he suggested not to mount this brick, the bottom course, right on top of the um, uh, baseboard, because this floor and wall can move independently to some degree, I guess. At least there's a potential, and it could pop these brick off. So what he suggested is is to leave a gap between the top of the baseboard and the bottom of the first course of brick so that if that does happen there's no force right on top of the uh, brick so made sense to me so that's what I'm doing so this blue line it represents three-eighths of an inch from the blue line to the top of the baseboard so this first course of brick is going to be three-eighths of an inch away from the um, baseboard all along the wall and I've already done this on the other walls. So of this one and three eighths, three eighths is being taken up by this gap. There's an inch left. So what you do is you take up that extra space, however much you have, and you make the mortar joints at the bottom, you make them a little taller. So to make it easy, this inch, I'm going to add a quarter of an inch to each of the first four mortar joints. So like I told you before, if you measure from six to six, it's two and five eighths inches. So you add a quarter of an inch to that to make it the mortar joint a little taller, and that's two and seven eighths. So from this blue line, I measured up two and seven eighths. Here I drew this red line. Another two and seven eighths, this line, and so forth. So that's what all these red lines represent is a gap or a dimension of two and seven eighths inches. So you can see from this new top of the brick line to the um, original one, you can see this gap here. Well, the next line you can, or the next uh, one up, you can see that that gap's smaller, getting smaller, very small, and then right here, it um, matches up. So from here on up, there is no difference in the top of the brick. You just use all of these pencil marks. So from this from this line down, this one and three eighths inches is being taken up. Three eighths of an inch in this gap, and then a quarter of an inch in each of these four um, mortar joints. So what you're doing is, is making, you are making the mortar joints at the bottom a little bit taller, but in this case here, you know, a quarter of an inch is pretty small. It's down at the bottom. Nobody's going to uh, see that. Nobody's going to notice it. And the alternative, let me get this camera back up and so I can show you. The alternative is, is let's say that you, um, or, or I, in this case, I didn't know about this, and so I just put that gap at the bottom of three-eighths of an inch. Let's just say I did that. And then I started um, mounting the, um, installing the brick according to this modular spacing rule on lines that I start, that I drew 
from that 3 8 of an inch gap line on up. When you get to the very top, you'll have that inch left over. Well, you know, the inch, this, this brick will not fit. You'll have to cut off quite a bit and you have to cut it off lengthwise. And not only that, you have to cut off every brick the whole length of the wall. That's a lot of extra work. These things are kind of a pain in the butt to cut and I want to cut the least amount as possible. So this is a much better, more efficient way of doing things. My understanding, this is the way that professional masons do it. And um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just following what the professionals do. And I've, like I said, I've already done it on two walls. This has worked out fine. You don't notice the extra space. Now, if you decided to take that inch in the bottom two joints, and you're adding a half an inch to each of the two joints, you, you might notice that. But, you know, you can, like, like me, I did it in the bottom four, you can do it in eight, you know, and just have an eighth of an inch in each one. It's however you want to do it, but that's the general idea, is just to space it out at the bottom where people are not going to notice it, and you won't have to cut all of these bricks. So, that's it for today. I hope you found this informational and uh, helpful. Hopefully, if you're doing something similar, this will help you uh, do the job more efficiently, uh, quicker, less work, and it'll turn, to, turn out looking great. So if you would, please hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.